How you love me? How you love me? How you love me? How you love me? How you love me, Jesus? How you love me? 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 How you love me, Jesus? How you love me? How you love me? Praise the Lord! <laughs> Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord, Jesus! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! You're welcome, my dear viewer, from wherever you're watching from. Here, your pastor, Paul Makanga, Victory. I love you, and Jesus loves you too. I normally begin with that theme of mine. That is my, my, my joy that Jesus loves us, and uh, we love each other. So today, I welcome you on board. I welcome you from wherever you're watching, from Africa, Europe, Asia, America, Australia, in every village, in every city, in every home, in every locality. You're welcome. May God richly bless you. May God touch your soul and take you to another level. May God fill you with His eternal love. May God open doors that have been shut for a long, long time. May God reestablish you in your seasonal blessings so that you might you may stand up and dance without instruments in jesus name may god bless you to such an extent today let's pray and we enter into the word of the lord heavenly father god i love you and i worship you thank you for loving me and thank you for loving everyone watching today we give you praise we give you glory and honor we love you with all our hearts souls and bodies you're welcome in today's broadcast broadcast us lord broadcast to us your love your greatness your supremacy your victory your love your joy your peace and your everything. Refill our hearts. Refill those who are supposed to be refilled. Touch them. Touch us. Bless us. Establish us and make us stronger than before. And everyone says, Amen. Dear viewer, uh, as you've seen my heading today, I've called it price tag. The price tag. I've realized, and as we all know, that uh, <laughs> Uh, today I'm going to share about something I love most about God, and that is His love. The price tag on God is love. Praise the Lord. When you go to any shop, any store, be it a boutique, anywhere you go to buy something, there is always a price tag on something you want to buy. If you want to buy a jacket, an automobile, a car, a bike, anything you want to buy, a phone, there is always a price tag. And there are these serious shops, malls and supermarkets where you do not bargain. God has got a price tag on him that is not... For bargaining, you can't bargain it. That is the amount on him. And on us, he placed that same tag. I remember going in a certain place, they were selling cows. They had put some tags, tags on them, naming their prices and their names and their numbers. There is always a price you have to pay to buy anything. And in this sermon today, I'm going to address this question, this, uh, this slogan, we are paying the price, God has a price you want to pay, he wants you to pay. I'm going to tackle that problem today. And please, dear my viewer, be attentive, walk, on, walk with me throughout and closely, because God is going to bless you like never before. He's taking us to another level. He's taking us deeper in him. In Jesus' name. Today is a wonderful day, like I've said. 
I'm going to speak about the price tag of God. Let's go in the word of God. And I've got it today from the book of Luke. In the Holy Bible, King James Version. I'm going to read King James Version. But whichever version you have. Let's go to King, uh, to, 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 rather to Luke chapter 10 and verse 20, uh, 26. 26. Uh, we can even begin at 25. Let's begin at 25. Luke 10, 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? How do you read? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. Praise the Lord. I'm speaking about the price tag. Believers... We have a tendency that there is a price for everything. There is a price we have to pay. There is a price we have to pay. It is very true. There is a price for everything. Nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. Praise the Lord. Nothing just happens. There is a price to pay for everything under planet, under the sun. Praise the Lord. There is a price to pay. It is true. But which price are we supposed to pay? Are we supposed to be poor in the name of paying the price? Are we supposed to lose our loved ones in the name of paying the price? Are we supposed to suffer, to go through suffering, through a lot of persecution, through a lot of pain, in the name of paying the price? That is another version of paying the price. But that one is evil. Because suffering and pain and sickness and poverty, and lacks cast and debts, those things are not from God. When you open the hand of God, there are no such things in his hand. And everything we receive, be it spiritual or physical, it is delivered to us by the hand of God. It is from the hand of God that we receive whatever we receive, spiritually and physically. The money you get, be it brought to you by his messengers, the angels, it was from the hand of God initially. Praise the Lord. Suffering is not from God. Pain is not from God. Sickness is not from God. Suffering is not from God. Poverty is not of God and it is not from God. Whenever you inherit Whenever you go through such things and the devil, either through people and sometimes through preachers, that suffering, whenever I receive such and the devil tells you that such is, a, is the paying of price, my dear, that's not true. It is a wrong doctrine. In most cases, we go through those things either through ignorance, which is not good to hear, praise the Lord, because it appears somehow abusive. No, my dear, I'm not abusing you, and I'm not saying you are ignorant. I'm just telling you what causes such a belief. It is a wrong doctrine. The only price tag God has us, the only price we are supposed to pay is a price called 
love. For example, when you say that God paid the price to save me, to save you and I, what do you mean? What do you mean? The price he paid was a price of love. It was love that made him go through what he went through. And in fact, he went through what you, he went through so that you do not go through such things. He suffered so that you should not suffer. He endured poverty so that you should not be poor. Praise the Lord. He endured shame and mockery so that you shouldn't go through shame. Praise the Lord. And don't say, I'm contradicting. No. He suffered, yes. But it was out of loving us too much. He paid that price of love. He came with that price tag on him. The price tag of love. The price tag called love. God loved us so much to the extent of giving in his only begotten son. And Jesus loved us so much to the extent of losing his life on our behalf. And the Holy Spirit loved us so much to the extent of raising Jesus and sitting him on the right hand of God and staying on earth in this season, to prepare us in love, for love. Praise the Lord. He stays with us in this dispensation, in this last phase of God on earth. Praise the Lord. Because of love. The only price tag God requires of you is love. The only price you are supposed to pay, the only heavenly price, the only divine price, the only price in the true doctrine of Jesus, in the true doctrine of the Holy Ghost and of God, it is called love. Praise the Lord. When you love the unlovely, you are paying a price. And let me clear this, this, uh, this thing out. There is a difference between persecution and suffering, my dear. Suffering and persecution are two different things. Perse Praise the Lord. Persecution is accepted in the eyes of God. It is holy, it is divine, and there is a reward for it. Jesus says, be happy when they persecute you for my name's sake. When someone fights your Jesus, that is persecution, not suffering. But when you go through sickness, through pain, through depression, through oppression, through hatred, praise the Lord, there you are suffering, my dear. That is not godly. You must fight out of it. Praise the Lord. You must fight out of it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you okay? Are you okay? If you're not okay, may God touch that which brings you pain. Praise the Lord. There is a difference between suffering and persecution. When they fight your church, when they fight your family, when they fight you because of your husband, because of what God has given you, when they ill talk against you, that is persecution. And that is accepted. It is of a good doctrine, my dear. Let me bring you closer. Praise the Lord. But when you go through poverty, sickness, that is not of God, my dear. So let's read again our price. 
that God requires of us. It is in Luke chapter 10, verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? In other words, is there any price I am supposed to pay? Is there anything I have to do if I am to inherit the kingdom of God? How do you behave in your kingdom? We hear you a king. We hear you a teacher of the law. What are you teaching Jesus? What is your doctrine? What do you want people to do? Why did you come? Why are you here? Did you come to overthrow Rome? Did you come to overthrow our politicians? Did you come to take to overtake kingdoms? Are you going to reign on earth? What are you going to do? What should people know? What, are, what should we teach people? What is the price tag? And Jesus realized the way he asked him, he knew the answer. He knew because he was a lawyer. He had started the law. And the Praise the Lord. And the law was saying, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as you love yourself. And the lawyer answered like that. Jesus asked him, are you sure you don't know what I want? Are you sure you don't know the price you're supposed to pay? If you were to, to be worthy of the kingdom of God, are you sure you don't know what to do? Are you saying the truth? Are you sure you don't know? Praise the Lord, brethren. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And Jesus realized he knew the only price that God requires of you is love. Loving God, loving yourself, and loving your neighbor. That is the only price he wants you to pay. Did you know that even loving yourself is a price it is not easy to love ourselves. I just realized, depending on what they called you while you're growing up, depending on how people treat you, sometimes you are tempted to think that maybe you are unworthy, that maybe you don't belong there, that maybe nobody loves you, that maybe you're not good enough, you're not beautiful enough, that maybe you do not even deserve some blessings. One time I struggled with a certain lady. God told me pray for her that I give her a car. And this woman said, a car? Me? A car? For what? I asked, how many do you have? He said, I don't have. But I don't need one. And yet, she normally walks on foot. She's always on a border border. She's using taxi every day. And God told me, I'm changing her season. I'm going to give her a car. I asked her, why don't you need one? And yet you are using border border, taxis, or sometimes on foot. And said, I do not deserve a car. In my family, no one has ever had a car. Secondly, the people in this village will start thinking that I'm a witch. Praise the Lord. But when I dug more inside her, I realized that it wasn't her problem. It was the problem of her upbringing. She used to grow, she grew up in deep poverty. Their mentality had changed. They thought they do not deserve anything good except life. Except to live. She told me I even wonder why God doesn't kill me. Praise the Lord. Are you like that? Do you love 
yourself before we even go to loving God and to loving people. Do you love yourself? Why do you hate yourself? Some of you hate yourself so much that you even go to tattoo makers and they pin you, they, they pierce you in the nose, in the mouth, on, on the body, blood splitting out because you want, you, you are used to pain. My dear, that's not the love of God towards you. And loving God, uh, sorry, loving yourself is not buying yourself a new dress, a new shirt, a new car, or land, or, ha or a fancy house, or traveling all around the world, going to every beach. That is not loving yourself. That is doing good to yourself. Loving yourself means when you discover how much God loves you. You accept that love to affect your life. You start loving yourself basing on the proportions of God's love towards you. Let me repeat this. Loving yourself is not buying yourself a new house, a new car, a new dress, taking yourself out, and eating whatever you love, a hamburger, a hot dog, a donut, an ice cream, or going on a beach, taking someone out. That is not loving yourself, my dear. That is called doing good to yourself. Praise the Lord. That is doing good to yourself. But loving yourself is discovering how God loves you and you acquire that love and you apply it in your life. And you start loving yourself, basing on the weight of the love of God towards you. Praise the Lord. That is loving yourself. My dear, it begins with knowing how much God loves you. Do you know how much God loves you? Do you know that he does not sleep, he does not slumber, not even doing this for a second, only because he can't allow sleeping away from your love? Did you know that God enjoys you? Loving him? Did you know that everything God has, because of how much he loves you, he is willing to give everything he is to you? Did you know that everything God has is for you, my dear viewer? It's for you and I. He loves us all that much. Did you know that he was in heaven and he didn't settle? Because he wanted you to love him. Do you know how much he loves you? Do you know that it was the reason, it, it was for that reason that he made you his likeness and his image? He made sure that he has to make you perfectly well like he is. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my dear friends. Praise the Lord, my dear friends. God did whatever he did because he loves you and I. Are you okay, my dear friend? I want to communicate this love of God to you in the very simplest way possible. God loves you beyond. Praise the Lord. God loves you beyond. Measure. So, we must discover 
the weight of the love of God for our lives. You can, you can imagine someone having only one son and decides to almost lose him for your sake. Take an example. When there is something you did and they say to settle that matter. To settle that matter. We must kill you. And someone comes, please, don't kill that person. Let me give you my only son in his place. And they kill the other son and you leave. Praise the Lord. God, God in his love, God in his love did whatever he did because he loved us. Because he loved us. Are you following me? The love of God fills heaven. And God decided that he brings that love to you, my dear. Can you imagine someone loving you in such a manner? God does not breathe anything else out of himself but love. And everything he calls love in himself is delivered into us or to us. Praise the Lord. The only price tag that God is paying to have us is love. So, that's the only requirement you have to be approved in the presence of God. Loving God, loving yourself, and loving people. And remember, I told you that loving yourself is measuring how much God's love is. And then use that love to love yourself. If I may ask you, why are you dressed like the way you're dressing today? Why of all the clothes you have, you chose that? That's the best for you today. That's what you felt best for you today. Praise the Lord, my dear friends. God is love. That's why he doesn't require anything else from us but love. For the blessings you need, the price tag is love. For the victory you have and the victory you need, the price tag is love. The only thing you need to give God is love. The rest come in. after this fundamental foundation ministering to God he loves serving him he enjoys worship he enjoys praise he loves uplifting him he loves us to help people but the weighing scale of all that before God is love. When you do anything, anything for anyone, for example, you can take someone to school. For example, you can send me money. For example, you can do anything. But when you do it, this is what God does. 
He gets what you've done and he puts it on the weighing scale of love. He weighs. He sieves. Everything we do by love. That's why in 1 Corinthians 13, when Paul discovered this, he said, I might speak in all tongues. I might be the greatest prophet, seeing and understanding everything. But if I do not do that out of love, even if I burn myself, even if I help all the poor on this planet, but if I do not do that because of love, I have done nothing. Because everything we do is weighed by love before God. Therefore, the most fundamental thing before God is love. My dear viewer, what I do, why are you doing what you're doing? Are you doing it because of love? Why are you helping those people? Are you helping it because of arrogancy, because of pride, because you want people to see you, because of what? Is it because of love. Because love is the only thing that God looks for in us. When you take someone to school, you help them with, it, with tuition, with school fees. God is looking for love first before he rewards you for what you've done. In other words, God is not rewarding us because of what we do. He rewards us because of the love behind it. Praise the Lord. That is why sometimes in the Bible he complains these people give me honor not by their hearts but, their, but by their lips. I'm paraphrasing. Even praising God, even worshipping God, even serving God. Why are you praying and fasting all the time? Are you doing that because you love God or because of something else? When you fast, not because of love, that fasting, my dear, is put on the weighing scale of love. And if it is not heavy enough, it will not stand because the only weight that is equal on the other side of the weighing scale of God is love. It doesn't matter how much you use to help people. You might not have helped like a hundred people if you only helped one person but with love and in love. God counted that worthy of all the blessings you're asking of him. Praise the Lord. I told you, loving ourselves is also a price too. Is a price too. Because the way we grew up, the things they spoke on us, the people around us sometimes, they are not love agents. They are agents of hatred, suffering, misconduct, and bad mannerisms. Praise the Lord. If I may ask, are you an agent of love or you are otherwise? Do you love yourself? God loves you so much that he is not even able to sleep or to slumber or to forget you for even a second. That is how much he loves you. And I pray that God reveals to you how much he loves you, how much he means to you. 
whenever he's speaking anything concerning you in heaven, he just says, I love that daughter. I love that son. I love her. Why do you love her, God? I just love her. Dear viewer, God does not want anything from you but love. But if you give him anything else out of love, as an act of love, he will receive it in love and bless you in love in return. Praise the Lord. Even the things we do in church, tithing, praying and fasting, dancing in church, jumping and clapping, preaching the word of God, reaching to the lost and sharing the good news of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Even obeying God, doing what he wants us to do. Sometimes it is hard for us. But when you measure the love of God you have, you just do them because you love God. For example, you might be a girl and men want to sleep with you all the time. But because of the love you have for your God, you choose not to sleep with them. Not because you don't have the tools for sex. No. Not because there is no place to hide. Not because you don't want sex. Or not because you don't enjoy sex. But because you love your God. You choose to preserve your body for him. Praise the Lord. God always has a question to you. I love you. Do you? I love you. Do you? He loves us. He wants us to love him. With all our souls. With all our hearts. With all our mind. With all our strength. With everything we are. Because that's how much he loves us. He loves us with all himself. He loves us with all his son. He loves us with all his spirit. In other words, God loves us with all his love, his heart, his soul, his spirit, his heart. He loves us with all who he is. With everything he is, God loves us. Nel thimkulu, mudhimukulu. Praise the Lord. Thanks for watching. Olga and the rest, thanks for watching. God loves us, and that is the only price tag He has for you. I ask you, my dear viewer, that when I go off air, you rewind, you rewatch this message today, and you listen to every word I've spoken, I've said. Because you must love yourself, then if you love yourself, you'll be able to love your neighbor. Because your neighbor, the neighbor God is talking about here, is not your neighbor in real sense. There are types of neighbors. One of them are a people in need, born again and not born again. We love them, we shower them with the love of God, by meeting their needs. That's another type of neighbor. That's a type of neighbor. Then another type of neighbor is your spouse. If you are married. And loving that spouse, that type of neighbor is believing in them. Following their dreams. Supporting them in any way possible. Then another type of neighbor is your family. The family here, there are two types of families. The first family is your husband, your wife, your children, and everyone under your roof. That is your family. That is your neighbor. Then another type of neighbors is that one of your 
the family of your spouse, the family, your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, your uncles-in-law, your brothers-in-law. We must shower them with love. When you love them, you are loving your neighbor. Then another type of neighbors is your enemies. The Bible says love your enemies. Pray for those who despise, despise, despitefully use you. Praise the Lord. Different types of neighbors. You can't love all those people if you do not love yourself first. And like I told you, loving yourself is not buying yourself a new house, not a new dress, not taking yourself to a beach. Let's go to worrying. That's not loving yourself. That is doing good to yourself. And you must do it, my dear brother. Enjoy your life in God, in Jesus, in Christ. Loving yourself is taking the entire weight the fullness of the love of God, you accept it in your life and you must use that very weight of love to love yourself and then use that to love your neighbors. That is the price tag of God. You can't love your enemies if you do not have this measure of the love of God in you. Because some people are unlovely, unlovable. There are some people that are very hard to love. Sometimes it is your husband, your wife, your children, your neighbors, your grannies, your grannies, your in-laws. Those are not easy people to love sometimes because they treat us otherwise. Sometimes the people will shower with our love by meeting their needs. Sometimes they pay us evil for good. Sometimes your enemies are so hard to forgive and love. And God says, you know what? When you find them hungry, feed them. When you find them naked, give them what to wear. When you find them thirsty, give them what to drink. Help them if you get a chance. If you get a chance to help them, just do that. Praise the Lord. But if you did not download the full measure of the love of God for yourself and accepted it the way it is, in its fullness, in his full measure, you can't love your enemies. That is the truth. That is why we first love God. And loving God is not serving him, is not worshipping him, is not praising him, is not trying to please him. Loving God is, is simply accepting that he loves you. That is loving God. And it is also a price to pay. For example, if you didn't grow with your father, and they tell you to relate to God as a loving father. When you saw your dad mistreating your mom, when your dad left your mom at a very young age and he never came back, when your dad never showed you any dot, any drop of love, it is very hard to believe that in heaven there is a father that loves you without conditions, without strings attached, regardless of who you are, regardless of what you've done, not depending on what you are. He just chooses to love you. It is very hard, my dear, to believe and accept the love of God. That is why it is a price. That is why Jesus came on earth to tell us that please, you might have suffered the way you suffered. You might have gone through what you've gone through. They might have treated you the way they did. But God did not have a hand 
in whatever he went through. Though he is able to turn every curse into blessing, though he is able to use everything we go through, even when it is the devil who inflicted them on us and used them for good. That's why in his word he says, all things are good to them that love who? God and are called according to his purpose. Everything work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. My dear friend, because God loves you, he uses whatever you've gone through, whatever you went through, whatever form of suffering, whatever form of pain, hatred and rejection. He uses everything for your good. Because God loves you so much, because you are deep in love with God, he uses everything for good. And using everything for good, only making them work all together for good, does not mean he was part of those, he was behind those people who mistreated you, who rejected you, who did not love you. No, God was not part of that, my dear. He was not part. He wasn't part of it. And he would never be. God was not on the side of your enemy. And when he tells you that please forgive your enemy, love your enemies, he is not advocating for your enemy. He is advocating on your behalf. He wants you to be free because he doesn't want anything saddening your heart. Because in your heart, that's where he loves you from and that's where you enjoy his love from. Therefore, loving God is not worshipping him. It is not serving him either. It is not trying to please him. Loving God is believing that he loves you and accepting his love to manifest in your life. Let the love of God affect you. My dear friend, he wants you to understand with all your soul, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, that no matter what people did to me, no matter what I have or no matter what I do not have, no matter where I am, God loves me. In fact, he does not sleep, he doesn't slumber, for his love is sick. He loves me too much and so much that he cannot allow himself to doze for a second because he doesn't want anything harmful to happen to me. So loving God with all your soul, with all your spirit, with all your strength and mind does not, does not mean... That it is not serving him or everything we thought it was. It is accepting and embracing this too much love that God has for you. It is a price, my dear. It is not easy to believe that God loves you. It sounds simple. God loves me, okay, he loves me. But we just say it, we don't understand it, we don't believe it, we don't apply it, we don't walk with the love of God. It is a price to pay. And it is the only price that God wants you to pay. Not suffering, not going through sickness, not lacking all debts or poverty. No, that is not paying the price. That is suffering. And suffering is evil. So when God says, like this man we've read in 10, in Luke 10, chapter, chapter 10, verse 25, through, this man came to know, what am I supposed to do? What is the price that God wants me to pay if I am to inherit eternal life? And God said, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your spirit, and with all your mind. Praise the Lord. So my dear viewer today, Jerida Makoka, praise the Lord. Where have you been? Are you okay? God 
loves me, God loves you. Believe it and apply it in your life. He wants you to, 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 to become acquainted with his love. He wants you to become used to his love. He wants you to fully know that even if someone wakes you at night in the very scary way possible, you will just tell them, God loves me. And these days, I add on another word and I say, God loves me anyway. No matter what we've done, there is nothing that can destroy the love of God towards us. And that's why Paul said, what can take me from the love of God? Is it angels? Is it suffering? What is, what is it? Nothing. But that also does not mean that suffering is part of salvation. No. Persecution is part of salvation, not suffering. So dear friend, I want you to begin to unlock yourself from certain mentalities. You know, I'm going, I'm paying the price. I'm in this desert because I'm paying the price. Are you following the same God that I follow? Are you with the same Jesus that I know? The God I know provides food even in deserts. He provides water, clothes, food, and money even in a desert. Don't you remember in the days of Moses, those 40 years people spent in the wilderness, in the desert? Are you trying to, can you prove it to me that they lacked food? He gave them even the best food we have never eaten. No one of us has ever eaten manna. Those people ate food of the greatest people in heaven. Manna was a food specially given to the most honorables in heaven. Not every food. And where did they get that food from? In the desert. They had silver and gold, cows and sheep and ducks in the desert. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because when they were coming from Egypt, they came with gold and silver and cows and sheep. Whenever they lacked water, God sent them water in a rock, from a rock in the desert. Praise the Lord. Their clothes never grew tired. They never grew torn. Praise the Lord. So, if what you're going through, if you're not having enough food, if you don't have clothes, if you do not have money, if you fail to get those home, if you fail to get those things, that is not paying the price. That is suffering under the spirit and the bondage of lack, scarcity, and poverty. I break it of your life today. The only price God wants you to pay is to make sure you learn to believe that God loves you. Secondly, that is first. Second, he wants you to learn to accept and embrace the love of God in your life. Thirdly, he wants you to use that love, the love of God in you, to love other people regardless, universally. That is the only price he wants you to pay. The other form of paying the price is not paying the price. It is suffering. And my dear, even in desert time, ends. As for Israelites, they spent 40 years. And it wasn't God's intention. They lingered in the 
desert because they refused. They failed to believe God, that God loved them. They failed to believe God. And God said, I'm not going anywhere with these people. Their journey in the desert was a 11-day journey. They were supposed to spend 11 days only. But due to complaining, grumbling, disbelief, not appreciating God, it made them linger and meander in the desert for 40 years. That is not his will for you. Suffering involves lack, scarcity, and poverty. Some people are in absolute poverty. Father, in the name of Jesus, under the unction of the Holy Spirit, by the anointing of the Most High God on my life, and by the, your hand, by the hand of God on me, I break that kind of suffering from your life. I break the power of sickness, lack, poverty, scarcity. Be free today. In the name above all names, which is the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. Change the way you believe. Kenneth, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The only praise that God has for you. We are living in a generation of grace. And grace is love. Grace is the power. I know people call it unmelted favor, which is true. But that unmelted favor, which we call grace, in the language of heaven, grace is the power, the energy, the strength, the ability, the potential God gives us to accept him to us the way he is. Let me tell you what grace means in the language of heaven. In the dictionary, grace is the unmerited favor. But in the language of the spirit, in the language of heaven, grace is the power, the strength, the energy, the ability, and the potential that God gives us to enable us to accept the fullness of God in us and to flow or to walk therein. The things of God are free, simple, but hard to accept and hard to believe, hard to flow in, hard to make an everyday life. The lifestyle of God is free and it is simple to use only if he gives you the grace which we call in the language of heaven, which we define in the language of heaven as the power, the strength, the energy, the ability and the potential to enable, that enable us, that enable us to accept to embrace, to acquire the fullness of God and whatever he offers and to flow therein, to flow therein. Praise the Lord. That is grace. It is unmelted favor. It is God so that it will be a price for us to pay, to accept his love. So, now I release that power, that energy, that ability, that strength, that ability, that potential, the grace of God for you and I to accept and believe that God loves us. And after doing that, after 
knowing that with all our strength, our love, our joy, our, our mind, our strength, our souls, in every vein of us, if we reach that level, then we are able to love ourselves. And I told you, loving yourself is not buying yourself a new suit, a new jacket, a new car, a new house. That is doing good to yourself. Loving God, loving yourself is accepting that fullness of God is love, the full measure of God is love, and get acquainted with it or to wait and apply it in your life. Embrace it and take it that God loves me with every bone marrow of yours. That God loves me and you love yourself using that very measure. That is loving yourself and loving your neighbors, your enemies, your spouse, your family members, your in-laws and everybody is under that category of neighbor. Is also loving those people is loving them with the love of God. You first accepted in your life. It is the only price tag that God requires of us. I was telling you, we are living in a generation of grace, in the generation of the power, the ability, the strength, the energy and the potential to accept God and what he offers to us and to apply it in our lives and make it our lifestyle. That is grace. We are living in that generation, in that uh, dispensation, in that season. We are not living uh, under the law, under the, 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 the days of old, where, whereby it was an eye for an eye. Do you remember the scenario of David, King David? Let me look it, look it up for you. It is in First Samuel. Rimande reboko si katarabosi la lakata. Tilekele rebosi ketere bobosi talabakata. Riele rebosa katarabo. Mande prusi keterebo. Ay. Rikese keterebo. Not first Samuel. It is in second Samuel. Chapter twenty one. Then there was a famine in the days of David three years. Years after he and David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, It is for Saul and for his bloody house, because he slew, he slew the Gibeonites. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Ammon. And but of the remnant of the Ammonites and the children of Israel had shown unto them, and Saul sought to slay them in his zeal to the children of Israel and Judah. Wherefore David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? And wherewith shall I make the atonement that you may bless the inheritance of the Lord? And the Gibeonites said unto him, We will have no silver, nor gold of Saul, nor of his house, neither for us shalt thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, What ye shall say, that I will do for you. And they answered the king, The man that consumed us, and that devised, devised against us, that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the courts of Israel, let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us, and we will hang them up unto the Lord in Gil Gilba, Gilbert of Saul, whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them to you. These people we are living under the curse under the generation of the curse. They didn't have the grace of God. It was a nigh, if a nigh. These people asked to kill seven people so that famine would leave the kingdom of David in his days. Praise the Lord. And even God accepted that. I was telling you that God loved us so much that he gave his son in our place. We were doomed to hell. We are supposed to be in hell forever. Forever burning without getting consumed. In pain, in nothing, in gnashing of teeth. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. 
But Jesus stood in our place. If it, this was, if this way of which we have read was in the days of Jesus, Jesus would have stood in their place. But Jesus had not come. So Jesus stood in our place. Such curses do not fall people. Maybe they fall them out of their ignorance. They are ignorant of Jesus. They don't know Jesus came to save them from that. They are not saved. But Jesus loves us. So the only price God wants us to pay, it is only and only love. Love that man because you love God and because you love yourself with the love of God. Love that woman. Love those enemies. Love your in-laws. Not because... God is advocating for them. No. It is because God wants you to be happy. Don't keep the grudges on your heart. The pain. They are deepening your depression. Your, your, even your expressions change. But my dear friend, God loves you. Pay that price of love. And paying it means you accept that God loves you. That is one. Number two, you use his love to love yourself. That is price number two. And price number three is that you use that love which God gives you, with which God loves you, and you use it to love all the people around you, related to you, and far away from you. That's why I always tell you that I love you and Jesus loves you. Dear viewer, if you're not born again today, God has a price tag on himself. When you look at him, the only thing you see on him towards you is love. He loves you, regardless of how your parents lived, regardless of how you were treated. Regardless of how you are currently treated, it doesn't matter how many people love you or hate you. It doesn't matter how many people accept you or reject you. It doesn't matter how they treat you. It doesn't matter how they speak concerning you or about you. It doesn't matter how they consider you. They might be judging you, condemning you, blaming you. God's love is not measured, basing on such evil things. It is only based on how much his love is. The only price tag God has on him and on us is love. If you love, would love to enjoy the love of this, our heavenly sweetest father. It is through his son, Jesus. He says, I love you. Come to me through this, my son. For he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the entrance to heaven. I live in heaven. I want you to live with me forever. But the only entrance to me is Jesus. If you love me, and if you would love me to love you, if you would love to enjoy my love, please you are welcome in my kingdom. Come through the door, through the entrance. It is widely open. The gate of heaven is Jesus, and it is wide open for anyone who wants to be loved. If you want love, receive him now. Say, Jesus, be my gate of heaven, my Lord and Savior, my entrance to the Father's love. I've heard there is a father who loves me with the price tag of love. Come in the inside of me. Serve me, dear Lord, and enter me. Initiate me into this wonderful heavenly father's love. I want to be loved and I want to love and love the right way. I am saved. Remove my name from the book of the dead, and write it in the book of love, the book of eternal life. Amen. 
and amen. Dear Lord, to, uh, dear viewer, today you've entered into the gates of love. And I begin, I command that God opens his gates of love for you. May that man begin to love you as Jesus would love you. May you begin to love those people as God would love them. Start praying such a prayer. Father, give me people to love me the way you love me. Let this, my husband, love me the way you love me. Dwell in this person and love me through that person that I may test good love. Dwell in me that you may love people through me. I also pray for you in the name of love that is above every other love, Jesus Christ, that God brings you people to love you, that God fills you with his eternal love, that God blesses you with all the blessings he gives all the people he loves. He says, I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently will find me. Wealth and riches are with me. My dear friend, may you be loved by God, by Jesus, by the Holy Ghost, by his angels. I know he's not going to start loving you today. He loved us before the foundations of the earth. Now I pray that God loves you and loves you deeper than deepness itself in Jesus' name. And may he begin to send you actions of love, miracles of love, signs and wonders of love. May he give you a house as an action, an act of love from him. May he speak the language of love to you. Houses, land, money, cars, good friends, and divine connections. Be loved beyond measure as I am loved beyond measure. In Jesus' name, I love you. You've been a wonderful audience. May God richly bless you. Till tomorrow, my dear, God bless you. Amen.